What's going on, YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatch back here with a quick Blu ray spotlight video. This time we're talking about the new Avengers flick, Avengers Endgame. Just happened to get a copy of this uh, screener in the mail. I wanted to sit down with it. No, I do not have the 4K version. This is just the Blu ray, and it doesn't even come with a DVD of this pack. It's just a Blu ray and a digital code, but we'll hop on in and just chat about it a little bit. I'll try and keep it as spoiler-free as possible, even though I'm sure everyone in the entire universe has seen this film already. But Avengers Endgame. So if you're a collector of the Marvel films on Blu-ray, you pretty much know what to expect in terms of special features, etc. But uh, there are a few differences between the 4K and this. And I'm fine because I do, I, I have a 4K television, but I also have a 1080p projector, so I watch a lot of traditional blu ray so this is just perfect for me. And um, the 4K came with a few different variations in audio, etc. but yeah, I, I can leave behind some HDR and just see things in good old Blu-ray every once in a while. So it was, uh, it was good revisiting this film. If you are the one person that didn't see it, it's a continuation of Infinity War that was originally titled Infinity War Part 2, but they decided to be a little bit more, you know, savvy and sneaky and retitle it to Endgame. Uh, it's a weird situation being in a, a society that's, you know, full of speed up and so just tapped into everything uh, that, you know, you can't really pull the wool over everybody's eyes so easily. So it was impressive what they were able to pull off in terms of cliffhangers at the end of uh, Infinity War. I mean, imagine going to see an old school like serial uh, adventure film and, you know, the cliffhanger happening, but you already like being tapped into everything about what the actors were doing in the near future, other, you know, related projects and just being that connected to it. So there's, uh, it, it, there's uh, that situation where it's very easy to be kind of cynical about the whole thing and not become emotionally invested in it because you know too much about it. Um, but the cool thing about this film is that while the previous film threw down a lot of, you know, heavy action in, in the finale and, you know, a traditional, uh, you know, cliffhanger fashion, but really went like above and beyond in terms of torturing the audience, uh, this film earns that and that that's a nice thing because there was that knee-jerk reaction uh to infinity war to you know, almost uh you know not become too emotionally invested in the happenings because you're like yeah whatever it's just gonna you know, get unwritten or something in the next film so uh this film needed to really stick with the characters and 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 earn the intensity of the previous film and uh it does it's it's a little bit different from the other films in the in the mcu canon because it's it's very character based in the, in the first uh portion it's very much you know dealing with uh, the emotional heft of the events of infinity war and the aftermath of that and you know some very very strong characters uh dealing with you know a sense of failure and loss and there's some serious moments in this thing with even you know, actors like Paul Rudd you know pulling some heartstrings pretty early on in the film um so yeah there's there's a sense of hopelessness and then eventually there's you know a lead or two but the events of Infinity War are just so difficult to shake off uh in in so many ways throughout this film and then there is a kind of turning of the the vibes a portion through in which um you know and if you haven't you haven't seen anything about it there's there's a bit of a a heist kind of situation going on in which a bunch of characters have to come to work together some of which who still have some acrimonious feelings towards one another and and are very reticent uh and, and reluctant to get involved in these you know superhero shenanigans again uh, it's a good mixture of of the cosmic mcu stuff with the more down-to-earth mcu material um you know the russo brothers again you know having helmed all the uh captain captain america films this side of joe johnston's first avenger and then you know having done the the previous film in this uh, series infinity war um yeah they know how to pull pull off big action but they also know how to pull off um you know just real fun scenes character scenes and then the you know the gravitas one needed as well and uh, when this gets fun it gets really fun there's a very kind of like surprisingly light-hearted adventurous 
uh, second half or you know second third more accurately and then um the big culmination you know, obviously has a lot of you know raucous action and, and fight scenes and everything but uh it's the, the that middle section that is a little bit different for an mcu film and i can understand some people being you know if you're just coming for balls out you know wall-to-wall -wall action you, you might be disappointed in you know the the story of this film being character based and um you know just kind of intrigue and and uh, solving puzzles and and that sort of uh you know material until you know the latter third of the film uh when some stuff finally happens but that said like there was a lot of battling in infinity war so this film has earned the right to be a little bit different and and, and enjoy some other things and uh the the heist angle i totally love i know some people were, were already saying it's you know it's nowhere near as good as infinity war but um uh, this one I'm I'm kind of connected more with because I love heist films and I love films that mess with um, like realities and things like that. I don't really want to get too much into the plot just in case you're that one dude uh, who has or dudette who has not seen this film yet. And it's got a bit of everything that the MCU has brought to the table and somehow the Russo brothers again are able to deftly interweave all those elements and, and make it feel natural. And uh, some powerhouse bits of acting. Robert Downey Jr. crushes it. Chris Evans crushes it. Um, Scarlett Johansson crushes it. Uh, so many, you know, Mark Ruffalo's got some great moments in here. And uh, yeah, again, I should, another shout out to Paul Rudd for, you know, having his character dealing with some more, you know, intense emotions. And uh, yeah, and there's some surprises along the way as to how, you know, how certain characters are even personified. Uh, there's some, some twists involving, you know, the machinations of the you know the avengers plan throughout the film and uh yeah it was it was a lot of fun it was a little weird watching it again at home though i must say uh, because the like big moments cinematically it, yeah like, kind of sear themselves into your brain if you go see it opening night or the night before opening night as i did and uh you you just have these kind of audience reactions like mixed in with the DNA of the film itself. So it's kind of weird watching the film devoid of people freaking out and cheering and, and hooting and hollering at certain aspects of it. So uh, it's kind of interesting watching this as, as a living room film as opposed to a Cineplex film. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm intrigued to see what the next uh, next phase brings out. But, uh, you know, closing out. Um, the first whole you know 10 year arc of the mcu uh, with style yeah this film really knocked it out of the park it's it's a little bit longish as you may have heard so make sure you have some popcorn and you yeah use the the pause button on your remote and you know go make pee -pees if you have to uh but yeah you know you're gonna pick it up if you're a marvel fan anyways but there you go <laughs> So yeah, we're dealing with the Blu-ray here, so no HDR, and even the 4K one, I believe it just says HDR10, it doesn't have Dolby Vision, uh, but yeah, so we're not dealing with all these crazy nits and little, uh, you know, bits of brightness and, and, and amazing, you know, spot colors and fun things like that, it's just a, a pretty typical marvel blu-ray affair uh it's a little more colorful than some of the older films that marvel's always had a bit of an issue and a lot of the you know their films are shot digitally so a lot of them have a real interesting uh, color palette and then sometimes uh, they also don't go to full black and this film also has some of that where the, there's the inky blacks of say the iron man one blu-ray are obviously missing from here uh but this is like somewhere in between some of the uglier looking fair and uh and things like guardians of the galaxy too um and there is some cosmic stuff in here that's just completely gorgeous you know some of the spaceships and stuff like floating through you know weird green cosmic clouds and distant haunting starlit shots of you know tiny you know from from our viewpoint tiny spaceships just kind of lingering in the void and uh gorgeous stuff but there's a there's a mix of daytime stuff nighttime stuff that you know the daytime stuff t tends to be a little less exciting or enthralling and there's a portion of the film where they purposely uh pushed the uh the the colors out of the film made it a little bit more drabber anyways to kind of deal with the uh the feeling of the, of this world that these characters are inhabiting anyways um so but that you know obviously there's some other planets that are a little bit more lush uh, that some of the characters visit and it's, it's so it's a little bit all over the map essentially because the story is all over the map and uh, a lot of the the big you know finale is set amidst amidst you know 
flaming rubble and stuff like that and smoke drenched air and uh, so yeah, so it's it's got a little bit of a varied color palette, but uh, pretty good looking on Blu-ray for sure. I'm sure it and in detail, I had no problems with it at all. Uh, it didn't look very soft at all. A lot of uh, you know facial features and everything like that, and the the costumery uh, looked very sharp. Um, so I'm sure it's even sharper on 4K for sure. But uh, audio was dynamic. You know, the differences between this and the 4K is the 4K they they threw on a Dolby Atmos track. Uh, and this just has a, a DTS HD Master Audio 7.1 track and uh, 2.0 descriptive audio Spanish and French 5.1 Dolby Digital Language tracks as well. Um, and yeah, I forgot to mention it's, it's the traditional um, scope, you know, 2.39 to 1. Uh, occasionally Marvel breaks free of that with the Ant-Man films, etc. But yeah, it's the traditional widescreen look for the film. Um, but yeah, the... DTS HD Master Audio track on here was very dynamic, and there were a couple times I had to ride the volume a little bit in terms of um, the dialogue. Everything was balanced pretty well. It was just that um, the dynamic range was was you know so good that there were some of the more bombastic bits that you know if I had to dial up the the levels to get the uh, you know, to get the center channel sounding <laughs> you know good because there are some kind of quiet tender moments between some characters in this film and then when the bombast happens it really happens and i didn't want to crush the neighbors all together so i did ride the volume a little bit and um the base there was some base there's like a one bit with a spaceship that's getting ushered uh, back to another planet and there was some you know deep rumbling lows there uh, but that said, it wasn't as... So it was a little bit better and more dynamic than some of the more recent Marvel Blu-rays, but it wasn't as tedious as uh, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier was the one where it was just like the end of the... Like the last half hour of that film was just like... Just a bass <laughs> boost that just doesn't stop. It was just endless rumbling. And I actually got like kind of like ear fatigue out of that. And I love bass and impactful sounding... Uh, soundtracks, but uh, that one just kind of wore me out after a while. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Everything's everything's CGI and everything's rumbling nonstop. Uh, but yeah, this is very dynamic and split surrounds like crazy. Discrete surrounds like crazy. There's some bits where it does take a cue from the Guardians film and has some needle drops, as uh, as they say, of you know popular tunes from the 70s and, and 60s, etc. Uh, very dynamically mixed into the soundtrack, and sometimes they're coming completely from behind you. Uh, there's a few moments where there's like very, um, yeah, not just like splits rounds, but elements that you're supposed to be paying attention to, so it's not just there for ambience or whatever. It's like part of an enveloping sound field, uh, which I know goes against some sound mixers' designs of, you know, always have to have the stuff you need to focus on up front, but it's fun every once in a while to break free and throw some things around you and this one certainly does so i enjoyed the dts hd master audio uh, soundtrack quite a bit actually um sounded great yeah extras on here are the usual ones though uh if you need to get a little bit more you're gonna have to redeem your digital code uh which i did um on the inside it's pretty uh pretty stripped out you get the usual slip cover and um, inside here, just get two you know, boring Blu-rays with the blue disc art and a uh, couple uh, Disney Movie Club advertisements on either side of that slip. And I don't have it with me, but my, um, my digital code was downstairs. But you need to redeem the digital code in order to get one featurette of um, involving Captain America and, and Peggy Carter. So, uh, and that's worth checking out, but there's a relatively short introduction by the Russo brothers uh, before watching the film, though I don't necessarily recommend that if you haven't seen the film. Not that it gives any direct spoilers away, but it shows you some scenes that you could probably figure out the context of and maybe reverse engineer and spoil some things for yourself. Um, so if you're revisiting the film, definitely then watch it with the short intro. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of celebratory... Um, you know, kind of, there's a bit of a sadness too in this because it's like the end of an era, so to speak. Uh, nobody knows what's going on with the Marvel Cinematic Universe from here. I mean, obviously some people do. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a, a bit of closure and, and there's it's a bittersweet moment uh, from time to time. But there's, obviously speaking of bittersweet, a great feature at rem about my remembering Stan Lee. And yeah, they've been harnessing and, and hoarding all these great 
uh, behind the scenes uh, bits of him shooting his cameos throughout the MCU. And uh, so that was great. And, you know, they were able to kind of go back to the beginning of him doing this, though they don't go as far back as to show you the cameos from the films pre Iron Man, which is a bummer because he did a lot of cool stuff too before the uh, MCU officially started uh, rolling out films. But some great stuff in there and yeah you get to see him on the set of numerous things the ragnarok one with this cool little you know outfit and uh just all the different uh yeah different styles and uh and and him having to like learn all these crazy lines and stuff like that so it was cool stuff uh then there was a robert downey jr centric piece talking about how he was yeah not everyone's favorite <laughs> person to have in a you know family friendly um, you know, franchise and, and how everyone went to bat for him and how he crushed it as Tony Stark and, uh, you know, what that brought to the MCU. And and there's also a Captain America piece, uh, creating Captain America, a man out of time. And then there's a Black Widow one as well, whatever it takes. So, you know, all the classic characters, you know, for the most part, get their own independent featurette. Uh, there were some deleted scenes, most of which are relatively short. There's one with... Um, uh, well, I don't really want to say who, in case you haven't seen the film, but there's a character, you know, dealing with um, a goji berries and an alpaca. Sure, we'll go with that. Um, and there's a couple of Rocket Raccoon ones, which are pretty cool. And one Rocket with Thor. Uh, I didn't even mention Thor, how much fun Thor was in this movie. And um, there's another Rocket one where he is uh, lampooning everyone and just laughing at them out loud because of the uh, Chitari fight and the first Avengers film and how they're the worst army in the galaxy. And everybody knows that, you know, you could just easily take out their command by destroying their lead ship. And, and <laughs> he gets, he gets a little bit of a come up and said the end of the scene, Oh, obviously the rocket ones aren't fully rendered. He's, he's in very kind of like rough, you know, PBS kids style <laughs> animation uh, for that. But uh, it's still pretty fun. You know, Bradley Cooper's performances in the can at least. And uh, then there was, um, the big one that everyone was talking about at the the uh, culmination of a big battle is a bunch of characters um, kind of coming together for a moment, and it does actually explain the fate of one character who was just kind of kind of disappears from the movie at one point, and it actually shows what happens to that character in here. Um, so those are cool and interesting. The gag reel is always fun, though this one was a little short, a little on the shortish side, and uh, I didn't get to hear. Um, uh, Anthony Mackie say cut the check at any point, so I was disappointed in that. <laughs> any any Anthony Mackie product, I, I need to see some cut the check moments in the the gag reels. Um, but yeah, so it was it was a little little short, but yeah, not too bad. There's also a feature about the the moment in which all of the women of the the film kind of get together for a you know an epic you know, running in slow mo scene, and uh, everybody got a little boo about that, as my wife would say. Um, but it, it's kind of an adaptation of a moment from the prior film where there was a bunch of women fighting uh, in Wakanda and they kind of like took that and expanded on it and made it a big moment. And yeah, it's it's kind of hokey, but no more hokier than everybody standing around looking tough in Age of Ultron while the camera spins around them. It's it's a hokey Marvel moment, so it's, it's meant to be fun. Um, so yeah, <laughs> your results may vary. And uh, what else? There was a couple... Um, there was a Russo Brothers feature at as well. Uh, obviously, they deserve a lot of the credit going on uh, with this film. And um, then, of course, there's the um, commentary track with the Russo Brothers and the writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, who's, who have also been involved uh, in this series for quite some time. And uh, yeah, the commentary is fun. It, it you know obviously gets into some of the material that's covered in the feature ads, uh, but then you know they get to take their time. And, and explain some of the the different scenes. There's a bit with Ronan when he's introduced, and I thought it was cool that they mentioned that it was inspired by Ridley Scott's Black Rain. I'm like, all right, that's awesome because this was one of my favorite movies. Uh, and yeah, this neon lit bit of uh, Japanese cinema within the film. Um, and yeah, there's continually little little nuggets throughout, and they explain why they made certain changes to the film, and and uh, you know explain that they kind of did like write themselves into a corner and how the the plan of the Avengers in the film like was originally written off as ridiculous amongst the the people making the film until they realized they had all of the elements in play already and that it wasn't ridiculous from a storytelling uh, stance. So 
Uh, really cool. So yeah, you get a little bit of a film school uh, experience listening to the commentary track on there. And I will pick up the uh, 4K and I'll you know, do a little bit of comparison and contrasting at some point, letting you know what the difference is. But uh, I, yeah, perfectly uh, satisfied with the Blu-ray, the multi-screen edition, which is still a confusing marketing thing that Disney's been doing, uh, which just means you can watch it a digital copy on your computer or your phone or whatever. And then sometimes if you have a DVD, you can watch it on a DVD player or whatever. But it makes it sound like it's some sort of like a multi-frame, you know, choose your own adventure thing. But but that's not the case. Um, but yeah, so it was, uh, it was worth the wait, even though it didn't feel like a wait because the film's been in theaters like nonstop since it came out. So, uh, yeah, it's, an, it's like... Uh, one of the uh, one of those moments where I feels like I just want to go see it like a couple of weeks ago, um, but yeah, you need to have a copy of it for sure. And there's so many details; it's so dense, so many characters, so many moments uh, that you know it's cool having it on Blu-ray. Not only can you watch it again and kind of pick up some of the smaller moments and and nods and things like that, but you can actually freeze frame if you want to and really kind of pick out all the nitty gritty in it. Um, so yeah, you got to get it. Yeah, you know? you're an MCU fan. You owe it to Tony Stark and, and crew. Um, but yeah, again, it, it, even though it's long and expansive, it's not without a sense of symmetry. And its uh, focus is, is definitely on character. And I appreciated that about it. I think they pulled it off and the acting was, you know, kick-ass. And, you know, they set the bar high. So we'll see uh, see how it goes for the next batch of films. Anyways, thanks for hanging out for a little bit and talking Avengers, talking Blu-ray, all that fun stuff. We'll catch you guys soon, and uh, I'll have some laser discs and fun things like that, too, uh, in the next batch of videos. So, cheers, everybody.